Are you an enthusiast when it comes to collecting dinosaurs? Do you want to level up your collection and collect only the best and avoid the models that have defects or design flaws? If so, this is the show for you. I'm here today with George, who is a real-life paleontologist, and this is episode one of the Dinosaur Review Show. Today we'll be reviewing the Archaeopteryx. In episode two, we will be reviewing the Microraptors. So at the end of episodes one and two, you will have a great overview of all the feathered dinosaurs so you can make your best decision. And with that, let's get started. Before we jump right into it, George, what is the fossil record that we have? As far as Archaeopteryx fossils go, the, the first ones found were whole plates. So most of the skeleton was intact. Um, in fact, it was first identified as an ancient bird instead of a dinosaur. Because back then, dinosaur was not a word. Dinosaur didn't get coined until the mid-1800s, and Archaeopteryx fossils were found as early as the early 1800s. So we do have, I would say, a couple good Archaeopteryx full skeletons. There's only one in North America, though. All right. And with that, let's jump into it. Which one do you want to start with, George? Let's start with the Popo Archaeopteryx. This is a really colorful dinosaur. Now, the first thing that pops when I see this are the beautiful colors on the feathers. And notice the tail. So all Archaeopteryx have this broad feathered tail. This is actually what made scientists uh, think that this was the first bird. In fact, the name Archaeopteryx means feathered wing, and you can see those wings right here. Now, when I say feathered wing, they still have claws on their wings. See the little hands there? I see they have one, two, three toe, um, one, two, three fingers. So that's pretty good. Um, the toes seem very T-Rex-like. Um, they were part of the family Manoraptorans, so they should have a little kind of a claw like Velociraptor did. So I will have to say this one did not include it unless it's being held down, but I do not see any size difference there. If you guys want to take a closer look, it should be this inner claw there. But yeah, other than that, I'd say I like the crest. Uh, the teeth seem to be very well sized. Uh, that's one thing that you'll see in a lot of dinosaur toys. Sometimes they're oversized, but I'd say this is a pretty, pretty cool model. Now, you had said originally that they had thought that it was a flying bird, and then it came out that it was actually a dinosaur. Is that why it has teeth? Because typically you would think a bird does not have teeth, but this model does have teeth. Yes. Yeah, so uh, as far as we know, there hasn't been a bird discovered with actual teeth. I mean, Geese have these ridges in their beak that look like teeth, and they hiss like dinosaurs, but they're not. Um, they're not reptilian dinosaurs. They're non. They're avian dinosaurs, as we call them now. The main features that would make this a dinosaur are also the same features that would make this a bird, but the teeth is the biggest difference, as well as the claws on its hands. Okay. Why don't we take a look at the safari model at this point? All right. So here is the safari Archaeopteryx. Now, first thing that pops to me, again, is that claw that I mentioned earlier. This inner claw is present, just like a Velociraptor, which we're all familiar with. And another thing is the coloration is different on this one. This one is a darker color with lighter wings. So I would say, based on studies of their feathers, which Archaeopteryx um, feathers have been thoroughly studied, being one of the first feathered dinosaurs discovered, they found mel melanosomes, which contain the pigment, and this is a lot closer to that color that scientists have determined for it to be. A little bit darker. Now, if we look at the teeth, they're not as noticeable as they were on the other model, but that's all right because it gives it more of a bird-like appearance there. Now, if we look at the arms, these wings are a little bit shorter. Proportion-wise, I would say the Papa one has more accurate proportions to the wings versus the, the uh, safari one. One of the other things that I've noticed is the, um, the pelvic boot is present there. That's very important to show. Um, it shows that it was a theropod, which are the two-legged dinosaurs, and they have that pelvic boot between their legs that comes out, which is not as uh, apparent here in the Popo figure, as you can see. If you were buying one for your collection, which one would you pick? For a first glance, I would probably buy the Safari 
one, mostly because it's very simple. Um, you get that claw on the inside of the foot, which is very important for um, accuracy, as well as the, the simplicity of it. I do like the coloration on the Papa one, but I would say if you're going for scientific accuracy, this would be the one to get. Excellent. So we've actually added value in episode one because the Safari figure is half the price of the Papo figure. So What? It is, <laughs> according to our expert, it is more accurate and it actually is less expensive. Well, I call that a win-win situation. Exactly. Right out of the gate, saving you money, making better decisions. Do you still have unanswered questions on any of these models or do you disagree with our conclusions? If so, check out below to find out how you can be notified of our live stream question and answer sessions. After certain episodes, we will put George on the hot seat to answer any additional questions or defend himself if you disagree with his conclusions. Also, I have a couple of favors to ask. Of course, give us a thumbs up and subscribe, but also if you could leave us feedback in terms of how we can improve this show. Do you want more detail? Do you want less detail? Do you want more of Kevin and less of George? Because clearly he doesn't know what he's talking about. Anything you can tell us now will help us improve these episodes going forward. Thanks for watching. See you in the next episode. And stay tuned for the bloopers. Today we will be reviewing the Archaeoptics. Ar Today we will be reviewing the Archae Archaeopteryx. Boy, why can I not? Do you like me to do that? Yeah. That line? Yeah. I figure with the dinosaur names, they can get pretty tricky. I know. So now from a layman's perspective, which would be me, um, I actually would go with the Safari LTD one also, simply because if I was buying it for a gift, the story of that, they actually found these myochloridians. <laughs> I know. <laughs> midichlorians? <laughs> yes. They, they actually found these midichlorians, which gave it the coloring. And I know it's that's not what it's called. Um, for those of you at home, they're called melanosomes, which are pigment-carrying cells. Exactly.